it's really not hard to fathom that any of this stuff could be true. Because now you're seeing a different part of Puff. And many of us seen the, I would say the, the dark side, the evil side, the aggressive side, the gangster side of him. Whether it was in the music or little incidents throughout over the years. But now, hearing like all these different allegations, this dude is much more wicked than a lot of people think. I know he might be soft to a lot of us, you know, out there that grew up and grew around him and know that he ain't never put in no work himself personally, you know, in the streets, well, in on any level, you know what I'm saying, hustling, whatever it may be. But he became a gangster when he got the money. He became a paper gangster first. You know, paper gangsters, nigga, that rob you for your publishing and all that shit, and they tell you go get your lawyer. Those are paper gangsters. But then he became a little more witnessing murders all around him, having killers all around him, motherfuckers going to jail around him. He just keep getting by by this, the hair on his chinny chin chin. Start feeling untouchable. Get away with one nigga again, get one dude beat up. You get away with it. Beat up Steve Stout. You ain't do no time for so you got away with it. Smacked up Dre. You didn't get, I mean, Drake. You didn't get no no time for so You got away with it. Allegedly broke him nose, punched him in the nose. He ain't get no time for it. Allegedly. Made it go away. Look at the allegations on uh, he hit the guy with the kettlebell at USC or UCLA. He just paid and made it go away. He didn't go to jail for that assault. He was with Kim the night she died. 